Hello and welcome to Band in a Box 2014 for Mac. This exciting new release has over 50 cool new features and we've also added 101 new reel tracks, 30 new MIDI super tracks, and two new artist performance sets. The first thing you'll notice right away is the most highly anticipated new feature, the great new user interface. In this video we'll explore all the new features with this interface and we'll also check out some of our other very exciting new features like the new user tracks feature. This now allows you the user to make your own audio styles very much like real tracks. Just record yourself playing whether it's guitar, bass, piano or any instrument you can think of and Band in a Box can then take what you've recorded and play it over any chord progression you can enter into Band in a Box just like it does with real tracks. First though, we'll check out some of the exciting new reel tracks. Right now we're listening to the New Orleans Boogie reel track style, with exciting piano and solid bass, guitar and drums, and all of these reel tracks are included in reel track set 190, New Orleans Boogie. For those watching who are new to Band in a Box, I'll just explain a little bit about what Band in a Box is and what it can do for you. Band in a Box is an auto accompaniment program that lets you create backing tracks for any song in any style just by typing in the chords, picking from over a thousand possible styles, setting the tempo, and pressing play. And that's exactly what I've done with this song. I just typed in these chords, picked this style, set the tempo, and pressed play. All of these instruments you're hearing were then created based on my chords. They're real tracks, which means that they're real instruments played by real musicians and can play over any chord progression you enter into Band in a Box. This goes for all the music you'll hear in this video. And it's not just the rhythm section instruments, even solos can be created over any chord progression you enter into Band in a Box. And you'll hear many examples in this video, including some great jazz soloist real tracks that we'll check out next. The real track sets that everyone is talking about are the Jazz Pole Winner sets. These are some of the most anticipated new real tracks and for good reason. The musicians here are world class legends, having made names for themselves over many years of performing and recording, and having been honored with various awards such as Downbeat Magazine's Critics and Readers Polls. Right now we're listening to a rhythm section of bassist Ron Carter, master pianist Kenny Barron, and drum great Lewis Nash. And they're backing up three great soloists, starting with Phil Woods on alto sax. Phil Woods is one of the greatest living jazz saxophonists. He's also very well known in the pop rock world for his famous solo in Billy Joel's Just The Way You Are. Gary Smulian is on baritone sax here and has been named Player of the Year several times in the Critics and Readers polls for Downbeat, Jazz Times, and the Jazz Journalists Association. And on guitar, Pat Martino, a beloved musician in the jazz world. This particular reel style uses all of these musicians with the rhythm section playing throughout and Phil Wood soloing where C and D are designated, Pat Martino soloing where E and F are designated, and Gary Smulian soloing where G and H are designated. And as I mentioned earlier, all of the music you're hearing was created simply by typing in these chords, picking this style, setting the tempo, and setting the part markers to determine who solos, and then pressing play. Band in a Box does the rest. Everything you're hearing, including these great soloists by these master artists, were created based on these chords. And if I changed them, everything would be regenerated to match the new progression. For example, I'll stop here, I'll change the key, and here's a new feature when changing keys. This box now shows all the keys in one screen rather than the previous version where you needed to scroll through a list. And you can either change the song key without transposing it here, 
For example, if you entered the song in a particular key before setting the key, you could do that here. Or you could change the key and transpose it here. And that's what I'll do right now. I'll change this to G minor. And I'll change a few of the chords at the beginning. B flat major 7 at bar 1, E flat major 7 at bar 2, D half diminished at bar 3, G7 at bar 4, C half diminished at bar 5, and B7 at bar 6. And when I press generate and play, everything, including Phil Wood's solo, is now playing the new changes in the new key. I mentioned the new graphical user interface, or GUI, earlier. I'll go over this in more detail later in the video, but for now I'll point out the improvements to the chord chart. The default font is now this cool jazz font, a big improvement on the more generic font that was used in previous versions, along with easy options right on the main screen to pick different fonts. The bar numbers are also now colored to match the current substyle, and the part markers have a new slick look. Also, for the first time ever, we're including this set of string quartet reel tracks. This is a real string quartet with real cello, viola, and two violins. You can use them as an ensemble, as you're hearing them here, or you can also access the individual strings. This is an incredibly versatile set. And here the strings are being used in a pop setting. And here they're used in a more stripped down setting. We also have with this new release a new set of pop horns, done in a very similar manner to the string quartet. And here we have just the horns along with the string quartet for an almost symphonic effect. And let's check out some of the other great new reel tracks. We have country equivalents of the Jazz Poll winners with our Country Award Winners set. Here we're listening to two of the styles from this set, with Rob Ikes on resonator guitar and John Jarvis on piano. Rob Ikes is the most awarded instrumentalist in the history of the International Bluegrass Music Association Awards. As of right now, he's a 13-time winner of the IBMA Instrumental Performer of the Year Award for his resonator guitar playing. And whether you know it or not, you've been hearing John Jarvis on rock, pop, and country records for decades. As a teenager, he was a staff pianist and songwriter for Edwin H. Morris Music and played on sessions with Ringo Starr, Diana Ross, John Mellencamp, The Miracles, and many others before joining Rod Stewart's band contributing the piano tracks to such hits as Tonight's the Night, You're in My Heart, and Hot Legs. And here you can have both of these award-winning musicians backing you up on your own song. Let's check out another new aspect of the new GUI, the mixer. You now have all of the information regarding volume, pen, reverb, etc. in front of you all the time, whereas in previous versions you could only see this information for one instrument at a time on the main screen, and in an awkward way at that. But this is now presented in an intuitive mixer which is easy to understand and easy to use. You now have sliders along with the number values. There are mute, solo, and freeze buttons available. For example, if I particularly like this resonator guitar solo, I can freeze it and then it will stay exactly the same even when I close the song and return to it later. And you have control over the overall level in two ways. One as a master level that will stay where you put it for all songs, 
and another that gets saved and loaded with individual songs. The through track is often used less frequently, so it's not always visible, but can easily be brought back. There are also tabs to show the pianos and patches. In the past, there was just a large piano covering the whole main screen, and it was often unclear what instrument was where. Now they're each on their own track, so it's easy to distinguish the piano part and the resonator guitar part. Also, a useful new feature with this piano is that you're able to click on the piano itself to hear notes for all of the tracks. Another new feature is that tracks without MIDI have the option of displaying slashes instead of blank staffs or rests. Here there are notes on the piano track so those notes display, but on the melody track there's nothing so I have it set to display slashes. And the same goes for the lead sheet, as well as printed sheets. In addition to our new real tracks, we also have many new MIDI super tracks. These are very similar to real tracks in that they are actual performances by real musicians. But because they're MIDI, you have complete control over the patches, the choice of synth, and you also have creative control over the music itself, right down to the individual notes that you can freely edit. This is John Jarvis again, playing a cool, funky 60s groove on a vintage electric piano. Another great aspect of the new GUI is the grouping of similar functions. There are now categories that make it easier to find what you're looking for. Transport area has everything to do with playback control. All of the typical transport controls are here, like the play buttons, stop and pause, and record MIDI, as well as the jukebox, which of course is also related to playback. Under views, the two main screen views are now together here, notation and chord sheet. There's a small break, and then here are the floating windows, lead sheet, guitar, etc. Here, everything to do with working with the individual tracks are grouped together, including the new user tracks, which we'll get to in more detail later. And here are other tools that are frequently used, like the audio chord wizard, guitar chord solos, and more. And of course, anything to do with saving and loading files is up at the top. And the drop station has a new look, with the DAW plug-in button right beside it for added convenience. Another new feature is Legato Strings. I'm going to add one of our MIDI SuperTrack strings to demonstrate this. I'll filter the list by strings and pick this pop string style which is around the same tempo as our song. Now what this feature does is for MIDI strings, whether it's in the old school MIDI styles or the new MIDI SuperTracks, any instance where the same note is repeated immediately after the previous one, it's turned into one long note instead making for a much more consistent, pleasing sound. The best way to see this in action is to look at it in the staff roll mode in Notation, which shows note durations with horizontal blue lines. So you can see the A here is held over the A, D, and F sharp minor chords. And the F sharp here is held over the D and F sharp minor chords, whereas in the past these notes would have likely been restated at each bar. Let's listen to a bit of that with the MIDI strings soloed. Nashville legend Brent Mason has always been a band-in-a-box favorite, 
and we've added to our collection of great Brent Mason reel tracks with these tasty nylon guitar background styles. The background styles are intended to be soloistic but subtle enough to work well under a singer or even another soloist. So this would be a perfect style to use for your own song over which you could record your vocals. And again, like all other real tracks, this will work over any chord progression in any key. Also with Band in a Box 2014, we've made two new artist performance sets. Again, Brent Mason has recorded some beautiful tracks in a variety of grooves, and these are tailor-made for learning. You can view the notation and tab in the notation window. This tune has Brent playing along with our New Orleans Swing and Pop Reel tracks. And here's a western swing. We also have a great set of bluegrass artist performances by award-winning Nashville musician Andy Leftwich. We have many bluegrass standards with Andy playing mandolin, as you're hearing here. these two can be slowed down to help you learn. And we have many tunes where Andy is playing fiddle. One of the most anticipated new features is user tracks. Man in a Box customers have been enjoying the wonderful and always expanding collection of real tracks for years, and many people have asked for ways to make their own similar audio styles. We've answered the call with user tracks. This is an incredibly simple way to get your own music playing back in Man in a Box in the same way as the real tracks. Now, your own music tracks can also play over any chord progression you enter into Band in a Box. And that's what I've done here with this ukulele track. This is a user track that I made in less than 10 minutes, and I'm using it here with other Band in a Box reel tracks. I'll give you a brief idea of how easy it is to do by going back in time a bit and showing you what I did to make this user track. So I'd like to record a simple pop ukulele user track. I'm going to open the one minute pop user tracks template song. You can download this from our website, but it's also included with Band in a Box in the Real Tracks user tracks subfolders in your main Band in a Box install folder. This is a 32 bar song playing some basic pop changes in C for 8 bars, then E, then G, and then A. It's just over one minute long, though it'll of course be shorter if you make the song faster and longer if you make the song slower. You can pick any band in a box style for this to play along to, and you can set the tempo anywhere you like, but I'll stick to this pop quintet at 120 beats per minute. I'll play a little bit of it. So 
So all you have to do is record yourself playing along with this progression on your instrument in whatever digital audio workstation or DAW you like. So I'm going to easily get these backing tracks we're hearing now into GarageBand so I can record there. But you can do it in any other DAW like Pro Tools or Reaper or Logic, anything you like. As we mentioned before, the drop station has a more intuitive layout, and I'm going to use that right now. The DAW plug-in button is now right beside the drop station, so I'm going to first go into the options for DAW plug-in settings. For the master track, you have the choice of having it create separate tracks for all the different instruments, which I'll do. There are lots of other settings here that let you customize exactly what happens when you drag tracks into the drop station. You can drag individual tracks, but I'll drag Master to get them all. It turns orange to indicate that it's now making the tracks. And now it's green, which means they're ready. I'll then actually go into DAW plugin mode. And you can see that I have GarageBand open already underneath with a blank session with an empty audio track ready to go. I drag from the drop station into GarageBand, and you see I now have separate tracks. I can play a bit to see what they sound like. Before I record, I can mix it here so that I get it sounding exactly the way I want it. And now I can just record my ukulele on the empty track. Incidentally, there's a PDF of the chart in that same templates folder, so you can print that out before you record. I'll use headphones so I can hear all of the other instruments, but only my ukulele will be recorded into the mic. And I'll listen to a little bit of that back. So with this track soloed, I need to save this file. It can be any of these file types. Compressed AAC, which are M4A files mp3, or uncompressed AIF. It can also be WAV if you want. I need to save it to my Band in a Box folder in Real Tracks, User Tracks, and then I need to make a folder which will be the title of my user track. And I'll use the Band in a Box Real Tracks naming convention, which is the instrument name first, ukulele, the type, which is rhythm, as opposed to background or soloist styles. Then a brief description, pop syncopated Tobin, which is my name. Then the groove, EV for even, it would be SW for swing, and the tempo the style was recorded at, 120. And then in that folder, I'll save it as Ukulele Song 1. Now back in Band in a Box, I have to save this template file to the same location. And it has to have the same name as the M4A file I made, Ukulele Song 1. Now our user track is complete. I can now use it over a completely different chord progression and it doesn't even have to be with the same real tracks that I recorded it to. I'll enter a fairly simple pop progression in C, F, D minor, G. I'll use a shortcut K4 to copy those four bars. A minor, G, F. 
D minor, G, C, and I'll use the same shortcut, K16, to copy the last 16 bars. And it doesn't have to be in the key of C, you can enter any key, and I'll change the key from C to E flat. I'll add my user track now. I'll click on user tracks, and now we see because Band in a Box recognizes a new folder in the user tracks folder that contains at least one example of a Band in a Box song with an audio file, both that have the same name, it now shows this ukulele style as an option here. So I'll select it. I'll press generate. And we now have my ukulele playing along with this completely new progression in a completely new key. You may be wondering how it's playing chords like E flat, since I didn't actually record any instances of E flat. Band in a Box has sophisticated features for automatically transposing audio, so it easily finds a close match and transposes on the fly. So I did record instances of E chords, so it can easily transpose a portion where I played E down a semitone to E flat. And of course we're not limited to the tempo it was recorded at either. We can slow it down. speed it up. The ukulele is fairly high in this mix here on purpose since we're demonstrating the ukulele user track, but of course with the new mixer it's easy to blend in nicely with the other instruments. And now these are the same real tracks that I actually recorded my style to, but as I mentioned before, I don't have to use the same style I recorded to. It is a good idea, of course, to pick a style that has the same groove and feel, though. So I'll use the filter in the style picker to only show me pop rock, even eights, 4-4 four, four styles that work well at 120 beats per minute. And the list here is now filtered to only show styles that match all of these criteria. There's now a very easy way to sample styles before picking them. All you have to do is double click on them to hear a pre-made sample so you'll know exactly what your song will sound like. So for example, here's classic rock and roll. Here's electric clav with funky band. Here's Pop American Guitar. Sixties Soul with Horn Section. With MIDI styles, there are actually two options. One with MIDI drums and one with a substituted real drum style. So for example, here's a classic rock MIDI style. And here it is with real drums replacing the MIDI drums. And here's a pop piano style. This is a cool one, so I'll use this. Now my user track is still loaded, so all I have to do is press play. The pre-made demo we listened to in the style picker had a pretty cool progression, so maybe I'll try that and see how the ukulele sounds over that. The style button has lots of cool options, and we'll look at those in more detail later, but one of the options is load song demo for this style. And before it plays, I'll add my ukulele user track to it. And here it is playing this completely new progression. Now 
Now you'll notice that this progression has slash chords, and we didn't actually record any slash chords. With user tracks, if Band in a Box encounters a chord type that wasn't actually recorded, it finds the best possible alternative, so it will always play something. In this case, for C over D, it plays C, and for G over D, it plays G, which is exactly what a musician playing this would do. If you entered a D13 chord in Band in a Box, it would find the best alternative available, which is a D7. If you entered a B flat major 7, the best alternative would be B flat major. Now, this is the most basic user tracks template you can record, but you can make them as complex as you want. All you have to do is record more files, just like the one you did here, which, incidentally, is why I called this Ukulele Song 1. You can add as many files like this as you want, and Band in a Box will use whatever files are present in that folder. So you could record a whole bunch of additional files, and include slash chords, more complex chords like C7 flat 9. You could make up your own chord progressions, or you could use one of our own advanced templates that provide you with all the additional Band in a Box songs you'd need. One final thing with the actual files in the user tracks folder. Now we only put two files there, the audio file and the Band in a Box file. But if we look there now, we'll see there are some additional files. Band in a Box creates these files the first time you use any user track. The BT1, BT2, and WAV files should be left there, but you don't need to worry about them at all. They're written once, and from then on, they just make the user tracks generate a little more quickly. Also, with the WAV file present here, that means that you can share this user track with Windows users, and it will work for them as well. If you did remove these files for any reason, it's not a big deal. Band in a Box would just rewrite them the next time. Options.txt can be edited by you. It just contains some information about the user track, such as tempo for the style, whether it's a waltz, what equivalent MIDI patch should be used, and whether it's even or swing. Most of this information is taken from the Band in a Box file itself, so you likely don't even need to worry about this file at all. But you can change this, if you like, simply by editing the file. An interesting thing about the tempo is that if you're using multiple files for a single user track, files can actually be different tempos and it will still work, but in general it would be best to record all files for any particular user track at the same tempo for consistency. Memo.txt has the memo for this style, so for example if I change this and type in simple strumming pop ukulele with slight syncopation and save it, then when I go back into Band in a Box, The memo is now present in the user tracks page. A new aspect to the updated GUI is that in the past we had many different buttons that had similar functions, and these have now been consolidated into single buttons that have all the different functions in one easy to use place. These multifunctional buttons can be identified with the little arrow beside the text indicating that there are multiple options. For example, the Open and Save As buttons have many options, and you can pick the one that suits your immediate need, for example, saving as MIDI or saving as audio. The Song and Style buttons are special buttons that behave differently if you click them on the top or the bottom. The top will perform an instant action, while the bottom will give you options. So, for example, with the Song button, there are options to open the Song Picker, which gives you detailed information on all songs in a given folder. You can load recent songs, or songs you've specially designated as your own favorites. You can open Song with the standard Mac Open Dialog, and many other options. The first one, the Song Picker, has a check beside it, which means that the top part of the button will perform that task instantly. So you see, if I click here, it takes me directly to that dialog. And you can set what you want to be the default action here. For example, I'll change it. And now you can see that the check is now beside this option. And so now if I click on the top part of that button, I get the standard Mac open dialog instead. So you can set this to whatever you use most frequently.
The style button works exactly the same way. There are many options here for selecting styles, including the band styles, which are the most commonly used all real track styles in all genres in easy to use submenus. This has been enhanced as well, with previous versions only showing a single list for this, and now it's organized in this intuitive way. But we can see the default is the style picker, which lets you browse all styles, which includes over a thousand styles with real tracks, MIDI, and combinations of both. Earlier we saw the handy way to preview styles here simply by double-clicking on them, and I'll show you some more of that now. For example, I can go down to the new Real Tracks categories and click on Real Tracks Set 192 and instantly hear what some of these dance pop styles sound like. 80s soundtrack, breezy pop with bell pad synth, bubblegum pop with Kodo synth, one of our styles that would work very well with J pop songs. Or this set, which has straight-ahead jazz, but with classic electric piano instead of acoustic piano. Well, the same idea of instant previewing at your fingertips has also been applied to real tracks and real drums. For example, I'll go into the real drums picker, and filter by New Orleans Pop so I can see some of these new real drums. The boogie we heard at the beginning of the video, and here it is again, just by double-clicking on the drum name. And here's another one that's included in Real Track Set 200, New Orleans Swing and Pop. Now, by default, it will play it first in a band context, and then it will play the drums by themselves or you can skip ahead with this button. Or you can choose to have it play the drums by themselves first by removing the check here. And you can listen to the different A-B variations to find exactly the one you want. For example, Variation 7 will play Funky Snare Tom Ride for the A substyle and Simple Ride at B. So it plays four bars of the A sub style, then four bars of the B sub style. So you can see it's easy to find exactly the groove you need. And let's check this out in the Real Tracks picker too. Earlier in the video, we heard some of jazz pole winner Gary Smulian playing a bossa but we also have a set of Gary playing some great baritone blues styles as well. Let's check those out here by filtering with the text Gary Smoolian Blues. Like with the styles and the real drums, all we have to do is double click to hear an instant sample. And it plays the real track in a band context first, and then solo, or we can skip ahead with this button. And here's exactly the same soloist real track, but used in a double time context. And we can change the order so it plays the solo sample first by removing this check. Those were both soloists, but we also have this background style, which is somewhat soloistic, but was specifically played to work well underneath a singer or even another soloist. So, if we like this soloist, we could select it to play with our existing band, or we could pick a style that uses this real track, or we could actually load a demo song that uses it. And we can see I've loaded a song that uses the New Orleans swing and pop that we sampled in the real drums picker, along with this great Barry Sax soloist. And there are lots of other great new features as well. 
loops are enhanced and now support ACID loops for WAV and MP3 files. And if you add an ACID loop that is on a certain route, for example F, Band in the Box will instantly allow you to use that as a complete style by transposing that loop to the current chord of the song in Band in the Box, so that the loop follows your chord progression. If you use the Garrett and Synth for MIDI playback, Band in the Box is now more compatible with correct mod wheel controllers sent to ensure the synth will play correctly without requiring additional input from you. All of the Best Real Tracks dialogues now show memos. When a real style substitution is available for a MIDI style, the notification is now by a green action dialog instead of a yellow message one, so that you can click on it to have the style loaded. And those messages are all now kept in a log, so you can always go back and look at them if you've missed important information. We now have simple variations for soloists and background styles, for example these pedal steel styles. Another useful new feature is the ability to see the entire chord chart full screen, which can be accessed from the Windows menu, or with a handy keyboard shortcut, Control t And there are notation window improvements, including thicker bar lines, guitar tab improvements, and easier entry of tab notation. The iPhone and iPad versions have been enhanced, with visual transpose for non-concert instruments, such as tenor sax, and there has also been support added for loading songs from Dropbox and Google Drive, making it even easier to get your songs from Van in a Box for Mac onto your iPhone or iPad. We hope you enjoy all of the great new features and the amazing new reel tracks in Band in a Box 2014 for Mac. Have fun!